So during the course of the session, we talked about jurisdiction and applicable law clauses. You can't just win on applicable law and not care about jurisdiction. And I gave an example of where I have a case today stuck in the middle of nowhere in Germany where the commercial court doesn't really exist, they're much more attuned to dealing with civil courts, and the forum I have is just not perfect for dealing with the complex commercial litigation that we have there. We also talked about limitation of liability and allocation of risk. And from a contractor's perspective, while we have a lot of risk put on us by companies, perhaps more than we feel comfortable with, the trick then is to ensure we protect the balance sheet and look at insurance as a good way of doing that. And I made the point that it's not simply about making sure you have an insurance policy, but also having a very good reputation and relationship with your underwriters and the insurance brokers who can help facilitate that relationship. We looked at one case where Palakis' vessels were offshore Mexico last year. Three of the six vessels that we have were offshore in the same place within two kilometers of each other. And that created significant legal or potential insurance exposure should something go wrong. So with our insurance brokers and insurance underwriters, we were able to come up with a satisfactory insurance solution. And that was the way that we managed to protect the balance sheet should anything have gone wrong in that case. The big learning for all of us though was that it doesn't matter how good a lawyer you are, you have to have a team. There have to be operations people, sales people, project people and legal people in order for you to have the very best output. And what we encouraged the members of the audience was to look at how they are structured. Is the lawyer someone who's on the side, who only gets consulted when things go wrong, or is he part of the team and is able to contribute to the product that the company produces and you end up with your very best tender and the very best project that you can produce. It was a terrific seminar with a lot of engagement from people and I hope you enjoyed the insight we gave you on this video. Thank you. So this morning at the Breakfast with EMAC we discussed the common mistakes that can be made in maritime contracts and it was a very interesting session. It was a discussion between myself and Caleb Raywood. Both myself and Caleb have experience both in private practice and as in-house lawyers with companies therefore we've seen both sides of that spectrum and I think one of the things that came out from that discussion and one of the things that is more engaging for the audience is an understanding that a contract and the mistakes that we make in a contract isn't just in terms of the actual legal clauses you know your jurisdiction and arbitration clause your liabilities your indemnities your allocation of risk but a contract is actually a jigsaw of living parts. It is a combination and a combined effort of a company, its lawyers, its operations people, its committing themselves from risk, that they are successful in the execution of their contracts. I brought to the table my experience both as an in-house lawyer and currently as a private practice lawyer dealing with multiple clients in multiple different fields who are also looking at this issue, whether they have in-house lawyers or not dealing with these things the amount of interest that you need to take in your client in order to really make that contract work and work from the client's perspective and make sure that both parties also go away feeling from the negotiation that they've taken a win and this is a deal they really want to do and hopefully want to do business in the future.